interpret. He goes on to say that if there's not an interpreter, they need to be quiet as far as speaking it out loud, and they need to keep it between them and God because something's going on personally rather than publicly. We could teach more on that as well. But the point I'm trying to get across to you tonight is about can everyone prophesy? Because there is a teaching in the body of Christ, especially among some Pentecostals or some charismatic people, that everybody can prophesy. Well, is that biblical or isn't it? Well, we can clearly see that, that as far as the tongues part is concerned, it's not. Watch this, verse 29. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to the others who, uh, who sits by, let the first keep silent. How many again? Two or three. Ready? Watch this. Let two or three prophets speak. You ready? Watch close. And let the others judge. Others who? Let the other prophets judge? Sure. But does that mean you can't judge? You better judge it. I don't care what their name is. I don't care if it's prophet Joe Bob or whoever else. You better judge whoever's prophesying by what the Word of God says. I don't care who it is. You know, there was a guy who used to go around that was a prophet, and he would see things, or so he said he was. He actually saw this, this there was a rich man, had some very, very expensive jewelry that he kept in a certain place in his home. Nobody knew about it but his, his wife. He and, and her were the only two that knew about it. Nobody else knew it was there because he didn't want to take a chance on somebody breaking into his home just to get to that jewelry. This so-called prophet told him exactly where it was and what the items were and told him that God said to give it to him. You know what he did? He went home and got it all and took it back and gave it to the guy. You know what that was? That wasn't God. Did it edify? Nope. The only person it built up was the false prophet. Did it exhort? No, only the false prophet. Did it comfort? Nope, only the false prophet. It ripped those guys off. Okay? Let it be judged. I, anyone who's not, listen, I'm going to, this is one of my soapboxes, so you might as well hear it and, and know it right off. Anyone, and I mean myself included, anyone who is not willing to have their teaching judged, anyone who is not willing to have their so-called word from the Lord judged, anyone who's not willing to have their ministry judged, anyone who's not willing to be judged is a person who you shouldn't have anything to do with. Because there's something wrong when they don't want to be judged. Because guess what? One day, we're all going to be judged. Well, you know, I'm a man of God. And I don't need you judging me. Good man of God, get on down the road because you obviously aren't. Anyway, let me get back to this. Watch this. Verse 29. Let two or three what? Help me out today, tonight. What? See, prophets? So he's addressing the subject above prophets. Is that right? Verse 29 is about prophets or addressing prophets. Is that right? But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. Who's he talking about? Prophets. Drop down to verse 32. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the what? Prophets. What's he talking about? Prophets. Isn't it interesting that verse 31 then is in the context of talking to prophets? It's not everybody in the church. But see, people who want to believe this idea, this false doctrine about prophecy, will tell you that everybody can prophesy. Wait a minute. What about 1 Corinthians 12? Because obviously... Let me go back here. No, I went too far. Here we go. Are all apostles, prophets, teachers, right? The word of wisdom is not in this list. So that means everybody can have the word of wisdom. I've actually had people tell me, prophecy is not mentioned in there because everybody can prophesy. 
Well, then that means everybody can have the word of wisdom because that's not mentioned in that verse either. That also means everybody can have the word of wisdom or the word of knowledge or the others that are not mentioned. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, check it out. Discerning of spirits is not there. That means everybody can have that one too. No, it doesn't. It's, a, it's, it's, it's sad to see how people will take the Word of God and twist it to build an idea into a doctrine that is nowhere close to being a truth. Can all prophesy? The answer is no. They cannot. The spiritual gift of prophecy is a gift given to people specifically so that God can use them to speak the Word of God or the message of God in that moment. Not everybody has it any more than everybody has the Word of Wisdom and everybody has the Word of Knowledge or the Word of, or, or the Discerning of Spirits. Very important that you know that. Because there is this teaching out there. I don't know if you've heard it here or not. When I say here, I mean in this area or not. But I can tell you it's out there. And you'll come across people at some point that have been taught this erroneous idea that everybody can prophesy. And that's just simply not true. Okay? Remember this. This will always help you. Sorry about that. Verse 31 is right smack dab in the center of Paul addressing prophets functioning in the church. And the all is talking to the prophets. Okay? All right. So, what is prophecy? Simply put, prophecy is an inspired utterance in a known tongue. What's the purpose of prophecy? Edification, exhortation, and comfort. Can everybody prophesy? No, everybody cannot. Because it's not something we can turn on and off as we will. Okay? All right. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you and praise you for the opportunity to be able to teach on these lines.